All right, guys, let's get started. I am author Nicole D. Miller. This is my debut novel, When Love Wins. When Love Wins is the tale of two young female cousins uh, with a rift in their relationship. When Natalie, the faith-based social justice advocate writer, loses her mom, she moves in with her cousin Ashley um, and her uncle for grief support. But instead of a warm welcome, she gets an icy cold one from Ashley. Ashley is the fashionista, uh, artistic, a little bit shallow and snobby one. And she apparently harbors an issue with Natalie that runs deeper than her ex, Bill and Natalie. This book deals with childhood trauma, grief recovery, parent absenteeism, cutting, depression, anxiety, the list goes on and on. Definitely has themes of faith, sisterhood, and hope, as does all of my writing. Um, but you can check out more at When Love Wins That Love. All right, let's get started. So you guys know every week I piggyback off of my latest blog on NicoleDMiller.com. So the latest blog is called How I Healed from Fibroids. So a few months back, I posted a blog post that talked about uh, how I healed drinking apple cider vinegar. <laughs> And it turns out that was just going to be a part of my journey with healing from fibroids. For those of you who don't know, fibroids are non-cancerous growths that grow on the uterus uh, lining of women, of women's uteruses. And 80% of Black women and 70% of white women actually have them before the age of 55. So this is like a very common topic that we are just now kind of discussing um, I actually did an article for the Cleveland Observer that you can check out when you look at my blog. You can click on the link or you can go to cleobserver.com. But I did an article and I'm doing a series called Fibroid, the Silent Epidemic, because it really is plaguing so many women, but you don't hear it discussed as often in public. You'll hear women maybe talking about it amongst themselves because they're having symptoms, um, excessive bleeding, there's a host of symptoms, um, pain in their abdomen, women are really going through it, just trying to get healed. So for me, I dealt with this issue a few years ago, five years ago, actually, and I did the surgery route. Unfortunately, like so many other women experience, mine grew back, which means I had uh, more issues in this uh, last season of my life. So as I was scurrying to go back into the surgery route, and I actually was contemplating a hysterectomy, which I think I forgot to mention that in the blog, but I was contemplating a hysterectomy and a good friend of mine sent me some information as far as going the natural route and looking into a holistic method, right? So after doing some research, and of course I still met with my doctor, but after doing some research, I decided to go vegan. Now I have done vegan cleanses Back in my early 30s, late 20s, I kind of changed my lifestyle based on my pastor slash health coach, Rhonda Sharpley. Shout out to her. And I changed my eating back then to where I was doing a lot of vegan um, cleanses and things like that. So I knew like how to cook and how to eat. But getting more active and in fitness and doing strength, I was like, I need my meat. I need my protein. I can't be out here lacking, you know, my protein. Um, although there are ways to get protein as a vegan, so let me clarify that. But basically, I, I love meat too much. I wasn't trying to <laughs> give up meat. And what I say in the blog is like, even more than meat, I love cheese. Like, that's my thing. So anyways, so because I was having this health issue, I decided, all right, I'm about to be all in for 90 days. That's what was on my heart is like, I'm going to commit to this lifestyle for 90 days. I did my research. The hard, hard, hard part, you guys, and this is what I say in my blog Giving up coffee, okay, OMG, giving up coffee was like the worst. Um, I have an addiction to Starbucks coffee. <laughs> and the thing about it, and this is what I say, is that it's not even that it gives me this pick-me-up that so many get off of coffee. Like I talk to people, they be like jittering, shaking, you know, they can't drink it after a certain time and all the stuff. I could drink a venti, at a venti cup of pike roast from Starbucks and go straight to bed. Like coffee does not do that to me. Once in a while, it'll be like, okay, that was a lot. But usually I'm cool. So it's not even that it gives me this crazy pick me up. It's that it's a mental thing. I started going to Starbucks during the pandemic. They had a drive-through. They were one of the few places that were open. 
I live and work from home alone. So I will go there. They give you a nice little greeting like, hi, Nicole, how you doing? You having a good day? You know, like they really have that marketing down. They really form communities. I got sucked in. So it really was the pandemic. But anyways, my point is, <laughs> and I kept like going on a tangent in the blog. My point is I did the whole vegan thing. I cut back on drinking. At one point I wasn't drinking at all and I wasn't doing uh, any coffee. I also tapped into some uh, supplements, the Detox Now um, program. They recommended, and I tapped into some of their resources. I tapped into Fibro. I know it was one of them. I actually list them in the blog. So go to my blog if you're curious. But yeah, so I started taking supplements three times a day. On top of, I still was doing the apple cider vinegar because I was seeing some results with that in terms of reducing bleeding. So I was doing apple cider vinegar twice a day, diluting it. I wasn't just drinking it straight. I was diluting two teaspoons uh, twice a day, three times a day doing the supplements, mostly vegan. I was pretty strict with my vegan. Initially, it was kind of hard because I was eating a lot of processed stuff. And then I'm like, okay, I really got to get more raw. And that's what I learned too, is eating out was hard because so many places, all you can get is like soup and salad. It was like so disappointing. Or it was comfort vegan food, which isn't healthy either if you eat too much of it, right? It's fine to indulge, but eating too much of it is like, you know, it's defeating the purpose. So that was hard. So you cook a lot, which I knew, you know, so you cook a lot. But um, yeah, so I ended up tapping in, went hard for 90 days. My symptoms cleared up within 90 days. I was healed. It was wild. And what I say in the blog is I just feel like God gave me the blueprint for healing. I think sometimes we can feel a little lazy in our faith. You know, we could just feel like, oh, I just need to believe or I just need to manifest it or name it and claim it and it'll come to pass. But faith without works is dead, right? So I feel like I demonstrated my faith by making the sacrifices and changing my life and adjusting my lifestyle. And then I rewarded with the I was rewarded with the healing. My body responded. So the testimony was I met with my doctor after doing the tests and all the things. Uh, we actually did a virtual call and I shared with her how I had been healed, how I literally stopped bleeding and hemorrhaging and all this stuff. And she was like, well, don't get the surgery. And I did not expect her to say that. Most doctors, surgery is extra money for them. So, hey, that's what I was expecting. But for her to be like, don't get it, I'm like, okay, this is Jesus. <laughs> like, I don't need to get the surgery. Long story short, I am like in month four or five of my healing. And I just wanted to encourage you guys who may be walking out that path or you know someone who is with some resources. So you can check out my blog. You can also check out the article. I'm doing a four-part series I recognize that not everyone's story is going to look like mine. So I want to share other people's testimonies, other people's stories, other resources, some history behind where this epidemic has surfaced from, and just give you guys some hope and encouragement that you don't have to suffer in silence. So that's my latest blog. Check it out at NicoleDMiller.com, How I Healed from Fibroids. Now, Y'all know we had girl talk this week. Okay, okay, okay. It was lit, lit, lit. This girl talk was definitely one for the books because it was, first of all, so many panelists. <laughs> like I had no idea everybody was going to say yes. I just knew I needed to cast my net wide. Some of these women I have never been in the space with before. So that was just like a leap of faith. And it all worked out so beautifully. Um, but yeah, we had amazing, amazing, amazing discussion. Also, it was targeted towards the Black community. Normally, I like to be diverse and all-inclusive. That's what Girl Talk is. It's not about a race or a belief system. It really is about us being women and coming together. Most of the discussions will be on that. But this time, I really just wanted to hone in on the Black community. So the topic was, can Black love still happen? Okay? Can Black love still happen? I think overall, we came to the conclusion <laughs> that it can. <laughs> But it was definitely an emotional conversation. What blesses me is when people get authentic and real. And I felt like that was happening. So that was great. I love when people just tell their truth. Um, it's not about us agreeing. It's, it's about understanding each other's perspective, right? And it's about us creating sisterhood to support one another and encourage one another in this journey of being leaders. So if you missed it, run it back. It's on my YouTube page. You can check it out. And then I have a few events coming up. I literally just posted this today. So 
I have Glossy Great Lakes African American Writers Conference. That is happening this Saturday at Cleveland Public Library at the um, Lewis Armstrong Building. Okay. So we will be there. I'll be there selling books. Then October 1st, I believe, is a pop-up. It's a fall pop-up um, hosted by Stuck Up Brand, Ayana. She is amazing, you guys. I did this pop-up last year. It was lit. That's the only reason I'm going back, because I've really fallen off of pop-ups. I feel like pop-ups pop -ups in general have kind of taken a back seat, I feel like, since the pandemic ended. But with her pop-up, she did such an amazing job. She's a young woman, but she killed it. I felt like blessed as a, as a business owner. It was probably like the highest sales I've gotten. And she like provided wine and all that. I don't know if that's going to happen this time. So maybe I'll put that out there. But it was like she had the right heart behind it. She was not trying to profit. She really wanted to put money in the vendor's pockets. There were so many people that showed up. So I'm definitely going to be there um, October 1st. Then in November, okay, this is the big, big, big one. I am going to be at the Cleveland Public Library at the Huff Branch, and I'm going to be featured on the Writers Unplugged podcast. So this is a huge podcast for Cleveland Public Library. I am so encouraged to have been selected for this opportunity as an indie author. They interview so many like best-selling authors, well-known authors, you know, all the all those things. So for me to be a Cleveland indie author and to have this opportunity, I'm so excited. I'll be signing books. If you still haven't gotten a copy of When Love Wins, <laughs> or maybe you got a copy and it's not signed, come through. I'll be signing books. Um, but it is going to be a live viewing of the podcast. It's free. Actually, all these events are free. So Glossy is free as well. Of course, the pop is free, but you know, you're going to buy stuff. And then um, the Writers Unplugged is going to be free as well. So tap in, tap in. If you're confused on what I'm talking about, go to my Instagram page at HCOHB or my Facebook page, facebook.com backslash HCOHB. Better yet, go to NicoleDMiller.com to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe so you can stay in the know of all the things, right? All right, so that pretty much covers it. I did post today on Facebook. I am in another writing season. I feel like there's just something about fall that screams writing. I literally am in knee deep in two different books right now. And it's really weird because I I did write, I did work on editing Urban Stories. And on the tail end of Urban Stories, I ended up writing um, When Love Wins. But this is weird because I am literally starting two books at once. And they're very different. One is fiction, one is nonfiction. And I have not written nonfiction in a long time. So anyways, that's where I'm at. I appreciate you guys for the support. I appreciate you guys for tapping in. Definitely, I feel encouraged. There are definitely some open doors happening. So stay tuned for the next thing. And I hope to see you at some of my events. Thank you for tuning in. And I will see you next week.